How's it going, everyone? Bob here, KD4BMG. It's long overdue. We talked about my antenna arsenal wall. You will occasionally see this in some pictures in some of my videos, and probably every time you've seen it, it's been different because it's constantly changing. I think I just want to explain to you what the original purpose of this was, what my original thought was, and what it's morphed into. Real quickly, what it's morphed into is an arsenal of components that I can sit here, because normally this is where my chair is in my shack, and I can just look to my left and decide what I need for the very specific deployment that I'm about to embark on. The space that I have available, the conditions of the bands, and I can sit here and I can decide what system I want to grab and go with, or what mix and match I want to play and put together as a Frankenstein antenna. So, this started as a label wall. You will see there are labels here under all of this gear. My original intent was a well-traveled suitcase with labels about all the places that a person would travel and they would identify with the journey by looking at the labels on their suitcase. Well, Amateur Radio gives me the opportunity to meet people all around the world. So this is my well-traveled suitcase in Amateur Radio for people that I have met all around the world. If you have a sticker, I don't care if you're a manufacturer, a distributor, a YouTuber, or an Amateur Radio operator, a club, send me your stickers and you'll make it to my label wall. As a matter of fact, I need to give a special shout out to Kurt Whiskey 9 Echo Romeo Tang for all of these stickers that he recently provided to me. It's time to get him and all of these stickers up here on my label wall, my antenna arsenal wall. So what is this wall? This wall is a sheet of metal, very thin sheet. Originally, I was going to buy some sheet metal from a local distributor, sand it down, coat it with primer, paint it, put it up on the wall. And I began thinking, you know, you're gonna be pushing magnets all over this thing. You're gonna be taking Velcro and putting it on and pulling it off and tape on and off. You're going to destroy something that's not commercially made. I guess I could have paid somebody a lot of money and have it powder coated. I just went and took that money and bought something from Amazon. It's a three foot by four foot sheet of metal that was made for this to hang on a wall. It has screw holes all around the perimeter so you can hang it on a wall. And I think it even has a coating on it that you could use this like a dry erase board. I never had that intention. That's not what I've ever used it for. I wanted to use it with Velcro and magnets. So when I say Velcro, I'm talking about command strip. And with command strip, you use Velcro on one side that has adhesive on the back and you put it on one object and you put the corresponding strip on the other side. And when you want to move it around, you can pull on this strip and pull the Velcro off the wall without damaging the surface. If this was just painted drywall, it wouldn't damage the surface. And then I could move this some other place onto the wall if I wanted to. Now, I also use Velcro on my whisper transmitter. Sometimes when you watch me test two identical antennas with one very Variation, I'll use two of these whisper transmitters. One of these will go down to 160, that's why there's three instead of just two. Two will only go down to 80, the third one will go down to 160. These are all three on here with Velcro strips so that if I ever had one of them get damaged or stop working, I could simply um, pull it off the wall and replace it with another one. And then these cables go over to power and the others go out so I can get an, um, a GPS to my window. So that's how I use Velcro. I use magnets on everything else. So this is a thread gauge. It just simply hangs on a magnet here. I use very strong magnets and then I can take and I can move anything around that I want to from one location to another. My matching units here are held on with these little hooks, but they are very strong. Um, all of these items here are held on with some very large, very strong magnets that have a long surface with a lip on the end. Magnet, lip, and then it will hold the item in place. So all of these are on with a minimum of two magnets. 
As a matter of fact, I need to do some reconfiguring here. Everybody from here down is going to drop down several inches because I have two brand new items that need to go up here. Can't show you what they are because they're not introduced yet. And when I introduce them uh, in just a couple of weeks, I'm gonna blow your mind. So we got some really cool stuff coming from one of my favorite manufacturers. Speaking of favorite manufacturers, you don't make it onto here unless I like you, all right? I'm not talking about this down here. A lot of you I don't know. Um, uh, I don't know you personally. If you've sent me your sticker, I like you. If I've talked to you on amateur radio, more than likely, I like you. Most of you are great guys. The few of you that aren't, well, we ignore you. So, uh, you don't see me use my Wolf River coil very often. It's up here for sentimental reasons. Wolf River coil does a fantastic job. They take materials that are available in your local Home, home Depot and Lowe's store or home improvement store. I'm not saying that's where they buy their materials. I don't know where they buy their wire. I don't know where they wind it. I'm just saying this is Schedule 40 PVC. This is available anywhere you can buy that. They produce something that isn't as elegant, say, as this chameleon coil that has Delrin and um, stainless steel and aircraft grade uh, aluminum. So this is a much more elegant solution. They both put out RF. This is going to cost you much less. This is going to cost you more. This is a premium product and then I have everything in between. But this has a special place in my heart because this is one of the first antennas that I ever owned. And so I don't care that it's not as elegant. It's basic, it's simple, it just stinking works. And because it was one of my first antennas, it's gonna stay up here. Um, so I've got uh, obviously Wolf River Coil, I've got Chameleon Antenna, I've got uh, Bad, Mad Dog? Mad Dog, Bad Dog. I have Bad Dog tools. This is Mad Dog coils. I've got two of Mad Dog coils. And of course, I've got my Gable 7350T and my RPG from Gable Radio. I do a lot with Gable Radio and Chameleon Antenna. I'll talk about that someday. But you don't see me doing videos on everybody's antennas. I have limited time available to me. I'm still full-time employed. I have chosen to invest what little time I have with few manufacturers with whom I have a relationship that we dialogue and discuss. There are some products that I've been on the front end of the discussion for thought for development. With Chameleon, I'm typically closer to the back end of, can you test this and tell us what you think of this? How else could we get to uh, improve this? It's not quite ready to go to market. So I focus in with fewer manufacturers whom I trust and value, who give me the opportunity to be part of the process of developing things that I enjoy using that I know you will enjoy using as well. Um, Mad Dog Coil, I just, I don't know. I stumbled into one of Marty's videos one day where he was making this. Years ago, I saw him make one. I'm thinking, man, I wanna be able to make one of those. And then I found out I couldn't buy this very special type of um, PVC that he uses where he winds his wire around. And then I kind of gave up on it. And then one day I saw him, he was selling them. I was like, I gotta have some coils from Marty. This one will do up to 160. I've done 80 meters on it with my SS25. This is the big dog. And uh, that was a lot of fun. So I'm rambling here about who's up on the wall. I also have some S hooks here that hang on to my shelving system. I think what you should begin to see here is everything is reconfigurable. It can change because in the four, three years that I've had this on the wall, it has changed drastically as my knowledge has changed as my skill set has changed, as my tool set has changed. So I'm just letting you know that. So if you choose to do something like this, similar size, smaller size, a bigger size, make it so that you can constantly change it without damaging anything. Get yourselves really good, strong magnets. If I haven't already said it, I'll leave links in the description below to the magnets that I have used here, to the Velcro that I use. I'll, if there is a link to the actual sheet, I'll leave that. Um, if I can find these S hooks, I will, but this would only be relevant if you have some shelving that you put, you know, in your room. I do this again because these S hooks, they are very easy to reconfigure and move around the room as my particular 
needs change or my gear changes. So if I haven't said it, I've got 58 inch whips up here, 17 foot whips, 25 foot whips. I've got a mill extent here. I've got my man pack collapsible. I've got the new gable um, carbon fiber antenna. Uh, this is the 17 foot, then their shorter carbon fiber antenna that goes with their 7350 TNTC coils. I've got that in my POTA bag right now because I'm getting ready to go do a POTA. Uh, I haven't talked about this over here. We're not going to talk about what's inside of this cabinet, but we will talk about what's on the outside of this cabinet. Also, <laughs> magnet shelves. Everything that I do as much as possible, I make it so it's adaptable. So over here, I have lots of gear in folders that are holding things that are of like you know, they go, this would go with a very specific piece of gear. This would go with um, an amplifier. So each one of these packets holds something very specific. And then down here, I've got coils. Um, I've got feed points. I've got radio pucks. Um, I've got my Cha Hub. I did this recently for a, what did I do? I took my mill extent, an SS25, and I put this on top of the mill extent so I could get a 33 and a half foot whip up in the air. And then I needed to put something up on that mill extent to give that thing some stability. So um, I got some shackles and the hub has four locations, one, two, three, four. So on four sides, I could take these shackles I could put an S clip on them and then I could run power cord down to the ground and that's how I got stability. So again, I sit here in my chair when I'm thinking about new ideas, I'm thinking about what else to do in the HOA to get on 40 meters in my very populated HOA, um, things that I want to use to go deploy POTA. And I look at all of my tools my arsenal of antennas and then I make decisions about what it is that I want to take with me and then when I come home everything gets put back in its place and it's organized for the next time that I want to go deploy. If I get new toys, new tools, I reconfigure. So, oh, radial wires, right? Just ready to grab and go. Okay, yeah, didn't show this one yet, I don't believe. That's just another magnet that has a very long extender, a very long arm on it. So that would be something you would use, say, for here I've got a matching unit that hangs on the wall, and the hook is pretty far out from the back of the unit. So if I was up against the wall, I need something that will offset. So that's just another option. So I think you get the idea. I just wanted to show you what my arsenal wall looks like, why it's constantly changing. It's constantly changing because, well, I get to test a lot of gear, so I guess I'm fortunate in that regard. But then when I have something that I really like that is for my personal use and I'm going to need it available long term, up on the wall it goes. So that's my antenna arsenal wall. Thanks for hanging out with me. Talk to you later, friend. 73.